So welcome to my pandemic garden where I am attempting to feed us but uh, on a much bigger scale than in previous years. This is the biggest garden by far that I've ever attempted. And then this garden is also meant to help other people, uh, friends, people in the immediate area. You know, if you're a gardener, you've always got extra stuff. Plus, I've kind of run out of work lately, so gardening is a nice way to stay busy. And this sort of tells a bit of the story of this garden. It is our second year using this plot and it was previously called grandma's garden but uh, grandma's nowhere to be found um, she was the previous owner and she was doing ornamentals and flowers and stuff over here in raised beds i tore all those out and i'm going to try to extend extend down that way and cut out a lot of the grass So I know there are a lot of really good, smart ways to get rid of grass, uh, mainly involving like covering it over. I've done uh, like newspaper in the past and cardboard and straw and mulch and that all works really well. But in this case, it seems like just brute force flipping this grass is gonna work out. And once I get it flipped, you know, this will take like 10 years of digging. Once I get it flipped, I'll be able to come through with the tiller and just kind of even it out. Before I get too far into it, let me give you like a tour of the garden just so you get a sense of it. You know, big picture. All right, so basically it is about 80 to 100 feet long and about 50 feet uh, side to side. I've got a couple of old posts out here. This used to be a, a trellis system and I think I'm gonna take them out. I think I'm taking them out. And the basic plan is that along all the fences, I'm gonna do my peas and grapes. You don't see grapevines yet, but I'm gonna plant some little grapevines. I know they take a few years, but peas, grapes, beans along the fences, that's gonna be true all the way around. All this grass, I'm gonna nuke it. I'm gonna flip it. <laughs> I've only flipped like about two square feet, but I'm just gonna hit it hard and flip this. I've got like the vestiges of this old center walkway, which I kind of hate, but it's all gravel and I'm just gonna leave it. It sucks, but whatever, I'm gonna leave it. Uh, these were raised beds previously. I got all the um, cloth pulled out of them and you can see there's a lot of like volunteer tomatoes coming up. And last year, we had squash over here, uh, beans and peas right here, tomatoes up there, corn was up there with kale. That is our big asparagus patch. And then this was kind of a variety of radishes and beets and stuff. This year, a little crop rotation going on. Tomatoes are gonna be up in that corner. And I think maybe over here too. This is more like permanent crops, uh, you know, stuff that's gonna stay for the season. And then this is gonna be the rotation side. So over here, we're gonna do greens and radishes and beets and carrots, you know, stuff that you plant perpetually rotating over. Uh, same deal down here, it's just gonna be extended. But over in that pasture behind ye old monster truck, I'm gonna do my squash beds and my melons and maybe potatoes too, circular out there. All right, on the hog wire hoop trellis, here's what we got so far. 
just a piece of rebar in each corner, one on the end, and then one in the middle that'll hold both of them. Same deal over there, piece of rebar, one in the middle, and just it's kind of simple wiring job, just to wire it together. These guys actually kind of stay in place because the soil holds them, but you know, a little wire isn't gonna hurt. And then just to keep them kind of uh, symmetrical, piece of wire connecting each one to build up some kind of shared structural integrity. And you'll note that I'm using all kinds of hog wire. I got all this stuff for free over the years. This one has much smaller openings than this one. And they're not exactly the same length either. That one's a little bit taller than the others, but it's all gonna even out in the end. And there's something I should just address right off the bat because it's on my mind. And that is the question of if I see this pandemic garden as like a, a statement about how bleak things are, you know, like, like is my perspective that there's gonna be no food at the grocery stores in a couple months. And if you don't have a garden, you're toast. Not at all, you know, I don't really know what's gonna happen in the future. You know, there could be some food shortages. It could be a lot of food shortages, but there could also just be none. It could be straight up box mac and cheese at the store uh, forever and no problems, at least in the, the, the short term. But for us, this uh, situation of being locked down, this kind of shelter in place order and just not having any work, you know, my work just totally dried up when this pandemic kicked in. That situation has been a little bit of an eye opener and like a reminder of just how nice it is to be self-reliant in terms of your food. Um, in a future video, I'll talk about our chickens. They just, you know, provide us so much, just so awesome. And the garden from last year is still something we're eating in all of our canned goods that we put away last summer. So, you know, it's a little bit of a mix, but I wouldn't say this pandemic garden is like a doom and gloom uh, based perspective, you know, one in which I think we're just all totally screwed unless you get a garden. But dang, if it doesn't help to grow some food. If you're a gardener or you've been one before, you know that you're almost always giving stuff away in those harvest months just because, you know, gardens produce a ton of chow. So it's only our second year in this garden and this thing's kind of been a mystery to me. I think it was the attempt to add a grape trellis. And these tent centers were used to um, tighten up the lines, but I think they're pretty sweet. I'm gonna reuse these guys on some of my fencing. And the post also, even though it's been notched into, is something I'll be able to use either elsewhere on the garden or on the farm. Try hard to set this baby in concrete. And it's worth pointing out that if there's a twist to pandemic gardening, from my perspective, it is trying not to go out and buy anything. And I'm lucky, I've got my seeds already, I've got tools, I've got fencing, all that kind of stuff on hand. But along the way, if there are little doohickeys and whatnot, or supplies that one would typically buy, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna make do with what I've got here on hand. <sighs> oh. 
And if I got any garden junkies watching this, uh, I just gotta show you the soil here. This is badass, <laughs> it's so great. Uh, so yeah, this is what we've got. We've got a very dark, uh, very little clay composition. And in this entire garden, you know, like I said, 100 feet, 50 feet, not a single rock, no rocks. If you dig down about two, three feet, you'll hit clay, uh, more or less, but no rocks, just dark earth. This is Illinois, man. I think if those dudes who inhabited the Nile Delta would have come here first, they would have had a serious debate about whether it was better to farm on the Nile Delta or here. It's just, the soil is just crazy good. All right, since this uh, video is all about garden prep, you know, prepping the pandemic garden, let me take you in and show you the seed start setup. Uh, before that, I should show you my cold frame. It is, it's coming along okay. It was a total afterthought. Once the uh, shelter in place order came down and everything, I put it together and <laughs> you'll be able to see that. All right, cold frame is right here. It is a, a random hodgepodge of two by eights, two by tens, whatever I had laying around and an old uh, patio door that I tore off some house. And in here we got the kale going on. It's doing okay. Something's eating it, but I'm hoping as the weather warms up, it's gonna kick in. All right, here is the indoor grow setup. Nothing too fancy. These are freebie uh, old school lights, not LEDs or anything. Got these guys on Craigslist uh, before shit hit the fan. And uh, basically I just got uh, peppers in early, onions over here, herbs, uh, melons mainly, pickles, potatoes, tomatoes, which are kind of jamming. They might be a little bit leggy, they'll be okay. Onions, totally kind of sucking right now, but there are a couple of little dudes coming in. Potatoes, and then down here, um, oh, I don't know, more pickles and squash and stuff like that. Uh, the setup itself is kind of cool. My buddy Steve gave me these pipes and these connectors, and I just rigged up a kind of pipe-based rack, so I can add shelves to it if I want to and I can adjust the lights up and down. And this is all caged up down here just so the dogs don't get up in there and bust everything. That is where the prep work on my pandemic garden is so far. Obviously more work to be done in the coming weeks, but that's always the case with the garden. If you've got a victory garden going on right now, like a pandemic COVID victory garden kind of thing, and you'd like to be part of like an informal network of these things, I was thinking I could put together a map, you know, kind of like a mashup with geolocational data and a Google map, and we could locate these things. Maybe it could become a thing. So anyway, uh, message me if you're interested in appearing on such a map or just post a comment down below. Happy gardening, everybody.